Imagine just for a moment the world going quiet. No buzz of electricity in the walls, no hum of computers or devices, not even the reliable light from a simple bulb. What if, with a sudden jarring shock, all electronics on Earth abruptly stopped functioning? It's an event called a global shutdown, an idea that might sound like it's ripped straight from the pages of a dystopian novel. But in actuality, it's a conceivable reality. A global shutdown isn't about a temporary power outage or a localized incident. Instead, it's a scenario where the intricate web of electronics that blankets our planet, an infrastructure that drives our communication, transportation, healthcare and economy, grinds to an indefinite halt. We're talking about an event so massive and all-encompassing that it could affect everything from the phone in your hand to the International Space Station orbiting above us. This would plunge us into an era that could resemble the pre-electricity days. Suddenly, we're living in a world that's no longer shrinking because of our ability to travel swiftly or communicate instantaneously across great distances. Instead, the planet becomes a vast, intimidating wilderness again. How could this happen? What could cause such a staggering blow to our technologically tethered civilization? There are a few potential culprits, both natural and man-made, that we'll explore next. The prime natural suspect in our global shutdown scenario is a solar flare, or more specifically, a coronal mass ejection, CME. A colossal explosion on the sun's surface that spews an intense stream of charged particles into space. If Earth lies in the path of these particles, the result can be a geomagnetic storm that interacts forcefully with our planet's magnetic field. A particularly strong storm could induce electrical currents in our power lines, causing widespread blackouts. The Carrington event of 1859, the most powerful geomagnetic storm on record, caused telegraph systems across Europe and North America to fail. Telegraph papers even caught fire. Fast forward to today and a similar event could be catastrophic, affecting everything from our power grid to satellites and undersea cables, the backbone of our global communication network. On the man-made side of things, we have the ominous prospect of an electromagnetic pulse, EM payonier attack. An EMP can be generated by detonating a nuclear weapon at a high altitude, which releases a burst of gamma radiation. This radiation knocks loose a horde of high-energy electrons that, moving near the speed of light, generate a powerful electromagnetic field as they're deflected by Earth's magnetic field. This sudden field shift can induce damaging current and voltage surges in electrical and electronic systems potentially causing a massive, continent-wide blackout. Both these scenarios, a powerful solar flare or a strategically deployed EMP, could cause the intricate electronic web our modern world relies on to unravel rapidly, plunging us into a new era of uncertainty and challenge. But what would this new era look like? Let's explore this in the next segment. As we have seen, the shutdown of all electronics is a scenario that can have several causes. But one thing is clear. The immediate and universal loss of power would have catastrophic effects on the preservation of our digital knowledge. This might lead you to question, what would happen to all the data and information that we've stored electronically? The first thing to understand is that the bulk of our digital knowledge, ranging from governmental databases to personal photos, is stored in two main formats, volatile and non-volatile storage. Volatile storage, like the RAM in your computer, requires a constant power source to maintain the information it holds. As soon as the power is cut, the data vanishes. However, non-volatile storage, such as your hard drive or flash drive, retains data even when powered off. So in a sudden universal power loss, any data in volatile storage would be instantly lost. But the integrity of data in non-volatile storage would still be at risk over the long term. Without climate-controlled environments provided by modern infrastructure, Sensitive electronic components can degrade, potentially rendering data unreadable. Moreover, even if the physical storage media survive, the machines required to read this data would also need to be re-engineered, a colossal challenge in a post-electronic world. To compound the issue, even the non-digital information would be at risk. The shutdown of power would affect not just the devices we use for work, communication and leisure, but also the systems that protect our libraries and archives. Without modern climate control systems, these repositories of knowledge would be susceptible to damage from humidity, temperature fluctuations and pests. Overall, the loss of electronics would thrust us into a new dark age, not merely through the loss of convenience and connection, but through the irreplaceable loss of knowledge. 
This prompts us to ask, how would we rebuild our technology and our society? Let's explore this in the next segment. The loss of all electronics would plunge humanity into a new era, one where the knowledge and advancements we've worked centuries to achieve could be erased in an instant. We've grown so reliant on technology that we'd almost have to start from scratch, but how would we even begin to rebuild our technological world? First, we need to consider that while our knowledge of technology may be vast, the practical know-how is distributed and specialized. Few individuals have a comprehensive understanding of how to build an electronic device from scratch, let alone the complex machinery and infrastructure that underpins our technological civilization. The ability to mine and refine raw materials, to manufacture components, and to assemble and program a final product are all specialized skills spread across countless individuals and organizations. With the loss of all electronics, we'd be without the industrial and informational infrastructure that makes such distributed cooperation possible. Consequently, rebuilding would likely begin with simpler, more robust technologies. Think steam power, mechanical computing and the telegraph. These technologies, less susceptible to an EMP or solar flare and simpler to manufacture, could serve as stepping stones toward higher technology. Recovering our current level of technology would likely take decades, if not centuries, and would depend heavily on maintaining social stability and literacy in the interim. It's important to note that this process would not be simply a replay of the Industrial Revolution. We'd be doing this with a fragmented understanding of a technological endpoint, and in a world stripped of easily accessible natural resources by prior industrial activity. The challenge then wouldn't just be how to rebuild, but how to rebuild sustainably. The path to reclaiming our electronic heritage would be a difficult one, full of obstacles and setbacks. Yet it's also an intriguing thought experiment. It makes us question our reliance on complex, fragile technology and prompts us to consider how we could better safeguard our knowledge for future generations. In the next segment, we'll look at the potential social consequences of such a universal technological shutdown. Buckle up because it's going to be a wild ride. With the shutdown of all electronics, our societal structure would face massive upheaval. We live in a highly interconnected world where information, goods and services flow across the globe in mere seconds. But strip that away and we're left with a society much more localized, much more immediate. The effects would be profound and far-reaching. Imagine it. The world's cities once bustling with technology and human activity plunged into silence and darkness. Traffic lights stop functioning, causing gridlock on the roads. Public transportation grinds to a halt. Skyscrapers, once brilliant with light, stand dark and abandoned. Supermarkets, reliant on electronic systems for inventory and refrigeration, quickly exhaust their supplies. Our reliance on digital communication would hit us hard. No more internet, no more social media, no more instant communication across the globe. Families and friends would be cut off, possibly without knowing the fate of their loved ones. Governments would struggle to maintain control, their command and control structures paralyzed. In this vacuum, smaller, localized groups could take power. These groups could be benign or malign, but without a unifying authority, conflict would likely arise. That's not to say there wouldn't be benefits. In the wake of such a cataclysm, we'd likely see a return to more communal living, with local resources and skills becoming incredibly valuable. The experience could unite communities in a shared struggle, fostering cooperation and empathy. Education, too, would take on new importance. With our digital repositories of knowledge lost, each piece of information, each skill, each story becomes invaluable. In this sense, every person becomes a living library, their knowledge a lifeline to the past and a beacon for the future. It's a sobering scenario, but it's essential to remember that this is just a hypothetical situation. However, it serves as a stark reminder of our reliance on technology and the fragility of our digital society. In the next and final segment, we'll explore the steps we could take to mitigate the risk of such a cataclysm. Stay tuned. It's time to consider our technological future. So what could our future look like if all electronics were to shut off, plunging us into a world without the technological conveniences we've become so accustomed to? It's difficult to predict precisely, but we can make some educated guesses based on human history and our understanding of societal dynamics. In the immediate aftermath, there would certainly be confusion and panic. 
Our world is so deeply intertwined with technology that such a massive shift would be disorienting, to say the least. Food and water distribution would likely be a significant initial concern. With no power for refrigeration or to run machinery, our current food distribution system would fall apart. However, we as a species have shown ourselves to be remarkably adaptable. Over time, we'd likely see the re-emergence of older technologies and techniques. Picture candlelit homes, horse-drawn carriages, windmills and water wheels. Communities would need to become more self-sufficient, leading to a resurgence in local farming and other traditional methods of food production and distribution. Communications would revert to pre-digital methods. Physical mail, runners, semaphores and maybe even pigeon post would make a comeback. Without GPS, old-school navigation techniques would need to be dusted off. Expect to see a rise in the use of maps, compasses and maybe even sextants. In terms of rebuilding technology, a complete shutdown wouldn't erase our collective knowledge. Those with the skills and knowledge to rebuild would become invaluable. Mechanics, engineers, scientists, builders, these professions would be crucial in helping society regain some semblance of technological normality. The rate of this progress would depend on the availability of resources and the level of organization in these post-electronic societies. And what of governance? The loss of global communication systems would effectively fragment the world, making global governance as we know it impossible. Smaller, more localized governments would likely spring up, with power structures based on immediate needs and the abilities of individuals within the community. In essence, the world after an electronic shutdown would be radically different. The pace of life would slow, and the world would become a much bigger place. It's a scenario that requires us to rethink our relationship with technology, recognize our dependencies, and perhaps consider how we might better prepare for such an eventuality. But for now, we are left to ponder. What if?